We're in a series called Finish. Everybody say finish. finish. All right. I don't care who you are. I don't care how old you are, how young you are. Some of you all, if you just decide you want to run around this building because of what God is speaking into you, you just do what you so please. Just don't disrupt us. All right. <laughs> all right. So we're in a series called Finish. Everybody say finish. finish. So let's get this down. It's already finished. In other words, before you got in your mother's womb, he's already finished you. Amen. Yes. All right. You already finished. He's already put everything in your package, everything you need. Yep. I like to say it like this. Heaven is a manufacturing plant. And in that manufacturing plant, he does not make duplicates. Yeah. So if you are recognizing and realize it, you are an original. I, Pastor T and I love to sit in the airport in different places and look at people. I am fascinated that over 7 uh, billion people on planet Earth, yet he still continue to come up with different faces. And your DNA... It's totally different. So why would the devil allow social media to get us to try to be like other people? Yes. I'm getting ready to disrupt you. I'm getting ready in a good way. I'm getting ready to cause storms in a good way. Amen. I'm getting ready to cause a tornado, but it's going to turn you in the right way. Amen. Everybody got it? Amen. Somebody say, I'm ready to pivot. Ready to pivot. So in a series called Finish, and the title today is Instructions. Real simple instructions. Everybody say instructions. instructions. Your life will change to the degree you're willing to listen to instructions and follow instructions. Now, some of y'all already know we got problems, Pastor T, particularly some of the men. Ladies, leave the men alone right now. Don't elbow any of your, your homies next to you, all right? See, men, you bought your children bicycles, kept them in the box, took them out the box, didn't look at the instructions, and wondering why the pedal is off when your child was riding a bicycle because you didn't listen to the instruction. All right, ladies, now I'm going to mess with you all because this really ladies and men alike. Most of you all don't read the instruction manual in that glove compartment until something happens. <laughs> Am I in the right place? See, I just want to make sure everybody fitting in the same boat, all right? Come on, raise your hand. I haven't looked at that instruction. Some of y'all don't even know you have a spare tire. <laughs> I, I, matter of fact, I was on a plane yesterday coming here, and you know what I, find, I decided to do? I, I, I decided to do something that's unique to people on passengers, passengers on planes. Y'all notice these flight attendants? They're standing up there, they're going over things and telling you about the plane. People don't be paying attention. <laughs> and guess what? As soon as something happens, they're going to be running around up and down that plane. And these people say, then they tell you, look at in your, uh, in the, in the, in a, in a seat pocket and get the instruction and get affi affiliated with the plane. Now, some of y'all don't look at that instructions so you can know at least where the exits are. You need to already be prepared. I've decided I'm going to pay attention. I want to know where things are. I want to know how we're going to get where we're going. I want to pay attention. Somebody say pay attention. Pay attention. So, I want to create a movement. And what's a movement? A movement in a good thing. Meaning this is the year of ascent and we are ascendants. Physically, you are a somebody's descendant. That's right. Think about why would we who follow after be called descendants? The word descend means to go down. Could it be possibly if a person don't get born again and get things corrected, the generations following them can continue to go down? But what if we ascend? Like Jesus ascended, you get born again, and now you begin to ascend, and your family that comes behind you continues to go up. If there was strife in your family, you get born again. You got that stuff out of your family, and now the next generation has ascended because the whole family is working together. Come on. What if you now uproot poverty out of you, uproot debt out of you where you owing stuff? When you leave your children, your grandchildren inheritance, Shame on you if you're standing up talking about, well, I, I started by my bootstraps. They need to start. That's a pitiful comment, and that's an unwise comment. Why would you want them to start at the beginning when you can at least get them past the starting because you took off? Right. Somebody say amen to this. Amen. So I want things to be very practical. You're in the church of the living God. That means he's alive. 
That means this is not school. I don't have a curriculum to go through and then grade you based on what I just made sure I told you. But if this is church of the living God, that means he's instructed me to say something through the scriptures, but he's going to confirm his word as well. It's not just a written scripture. He wants you to see something happening in your life as a result of this scripture. Everybody got it? So in this teaching, it's called, the series called Finish is Already Done. The title today is Instructions. Everybody got it? What is it? Instructions. Instructions. So I want to put a few things up, and for those that are on the uh, monitoring the video, I'm jumping ahead with my pictures. So what I would like to do is show you what starts a movement. A movement. In other words, how do you get people to go in? Like before I ever thought I could be a great football player, I got with some guys who were about two, or two years ahead of me. They were far more talented than I was. And they, I would call them so I can go work out with them. Because I found out if I just got in the environment, it changed me. Yes. Your environment will change you before you change it. Yes. So do you know working out with those guys, they never call me and say, hey, come work out with us. I called them. Why? Because I saw something on them that I wanted. And God wants to create movements. In other words, stop living below your means. Some of y'all, they got stuff. They got stuff. You got stuff you have. In, let, me, let me use the example real quick. So I shared this earlier and I messed my glasses up so it may not be as powerful as I need it to be. So I have these sunshades right here. I crushed them earlier. And the reason I crushed them early is because they're so raggedy and jacked up, I didn't want anybody else to use them. Now, I had these sunglasses, and it's all scratched up. And I was doing something with these that I rarely do. Like if something messed up, broken, I usually get rid of it, or at least fix it. Because I found out one of the things about humans, we can get comfortable with broke stuff. Walk in your house and that picture just crooked. And we're like, why is that picture crooked? I don't know. <laughs> and do you know you can become comfortable with broken relationships? Yeah. You and I were created to fix stuff. Amen. You were created to fix it. But if you're not comfortable, if because we descendants, we just live with the same stuff that was in the prior generation. Yeah. Well, my mom ain't get along with anybody, and now you don't get along with anybody. You done descended after her. You done brought it down. Now you more low down than your mama. You just as messy as your mama. When God has allowed you to get saved to do what? Change that stuff. Start loving people based on God's love for you. Call them up when the Spirit say call them. Stop running through your old Mickey Mouse brain. Well, I ain't calling nigga. I want them to call me. So God can't get you to, to initiate nothing. When God trying to change your whole family. Change your grandkids. Change your great-grandkids so they won't have that stress in the family because you done stopped it in yours. Yes. So I was, I was, I've, been, I've been walking with these glasses. They're all scratched up, and I've just been wearing them. And I, it, it was just against my nature, but I don't know why I kept doing it. I put these things on and try to block the sun, and I see scratches all on it. <laughs> I should have been got rid of this. Some of y'all like that right now. You just letting raggedy stuff hang around. Did he say raggedy? You just letting stuff just hang around, and you are God's kid. You are supposed to bend God rid of that stuff. Yes. And you know the crazy thing? Y'all want to know what's the crazy thing? And it's believers. The Spirit of God told me last night, he said, go look in your little cabinet where you got stuff. And man, I saw a bunch of boxes like this. Now, I've been using this for months. This raggedy thing, you could barely see through it. I had to pull them off when the, when the sun up uh, so I could see because they got so many scratches on it. <laughs> I'm trying to give you guys such imagery where you'll see, stop this dysfunction now that you save, all right? Everybody say, God got something better for me. Yes. See, you may not believe that. I need to preach that until you believe that. God got something better for me. Yes. You may be, as, as I say, an old hoopty. And it may not be the best car. You may, got, you may have fumes coming out of it, but it's getting you around. You need to be, why are you getting around with the fumes at the stop sign and everybody choking because of the smoke coming out your car? <laughs> you need to be saying, God, I got something better for me. 
to you, I don't want to wait till you get something better. You need to start saying right now, some of y'all in old janky apartment. <laughs> and it's been time for you to get out there. You can hear your neighbors <laughs> when, when they pass gas. Because <laughs> the, the wall's so thin. Somebody say, I'm getting out of there. <laughs> Somebody say, I, I want better. Want better. Amen. Yes. He has better, but he can't give you better if you don't want better. Yeah. Amen. So I went to my little closet, and I realized... I had like five of these because I get free stuff all the time. So a lot of times when I go and I do the work that I do with the league, it's all the time companies give you free stuff. So the whole time, this was all there. Wow. <laughs> all right. <laughs> now here's the trip part. They were there the whole time. And I wonder how many of us are leaving stuff on the shelf. Yes. Why? Because you've got comfortable. You don't realize when you became a born-again child of God, I don't care what school you went to. I don't care what part of St. Louis you're from. You have a right to expect better in your life. Amen. Otherwise, why get saved and continue to live all like a pauper? And I could tell you a secret. Being poor don't mean you're a great Christian. And this is, not, this is not a money sermon. This is understanding that you're a child of the Most High God, and He wants better for you. And Him doing better for you is you being a light for Him. I'm telling you, and you're not yelling and shouting the way you're supposed to because you and I don't know who we are and don't know what your heavenly father wants to bless you with. It's the father's good pleasure to take care of you. A father is not fulfilled with, until he's taken care of. You get some of the guys, that's why you got to pray for your brothers, pray for the men in your life that look like they're missing out, not being great fathers. That means the enemy has done something with them because a true father can't live, can't eat without taking care of that which he started. So that's why there's an attack on the men. If you got you a husband, you need to be praying for that dude. You got a dad, you need to be praying for him. Because the enemy wants to disappoint him, wants to get him in the flesh, wants to get him to quit. Because he said, if you bind the strong man, you can spoil what's in his house. So ladies, you got a vested interest to pray for us. Amen? Amen. And that don't mean we don't need to pray for you because you guys got power. Because you guys got the influence. Man, talk about, I'm the man of this house. Okay. <laughs> you may be the head, but I, you've heard it before. She the neck. She turned that head. Your, ladies, y'all so powerful. I don't know if I want to tell y'all this. <laughs> so the man, I don't know if I want to tell them this now. Y'all so powerful. God told, told the kings, don't be marrying no strange women now. Because they will turn your heart. <laughs> Satan didn't go to Adam. He went to Eve. Yes. He went to the influencer. Because who you sleep with will influence you. Yes. Yes. Boy, I just can't get amen in this group, man. <laughs> Shout out to all y'all that's viewing this live stream. I know y'all shouting in y'all living room, all right? Amen. So when is serious. Everybody say instructions. So the whole time I had this. But what I didn't realize is I still was dealing with a root system. A root system that said living with broken things is okay. Because when you give your life to Christ, you get born again, Gloria. Your spirit changes, but your brain doesn't. When you get born again, the real you, the spirit you, become regenerated, which means, thank you, babe, which means comes alive. But you have to renew the mind. That's why you can be led by the spirit even in the process of why you're renewing your mind. You're renewing your mind because you want your mind to be in alignment with what the spirit is saying. Yes. Because if you don't renew your mind with the word of God, the spirit will be telling you something, but you're rejected because of what you're thinking. And God will tell you, I got more for you. I got these glasses for you. They brand new. You didn't pay for them. How many of y'all know 
that God has some free stuff for you. Some of y'all don't believe that. I know some, it's hard for people to believe because you've been taught all your life, you got to work. You got to work. You, or if you're going to get it, you got to work. You are to be working to earn a giving, yes. not a living. Yes. Yes. People don't believe that. Why? Because in your brain, your roots say, God's telling you, I got some free stuff for you. But you know what your brain telling you? No, that, no, that preacher, he lying. He lying. How do I know he has free stuff for you? How do I know? Yeah. Proof text. How do I know? And Jesus said the scriptures can't be broken. Meaning, if it's in the scriptures, it's true. How do I know from scripture? Of all the garden, of all the trees in the garden, you got to pay for them. Is that what your Bible says? Come on, scholars, what the Bible said. Really? I say that again? Really? So it sounds like God started the first free lunch program. <laughs> not public schools. Right. I was not to be running out here chasing that stuff. I was to chase purpose and what he told me to do. And then he said, I'm going to add all this stuff. But if you haven't renewed your mind with the word, you're going to be chasing the bag. Mm. Well, his, his goal is to give you the bag. He said, why are you chasing? He said, that's what the Gentiles chase. We used to be Gentiles. Gentiles chasing clothes, chasing money. The children of God, we speak things. We get in line. We call those things that be not as though they were. Now, I wanted to show you this because this root system you can't see. You can't see the roots. You can see this. This looks so beautiful. We can't see your thinking. That's why they have uh, devices that can scan the brain. And they're able to see the brain, the, your memory, look just like trees. And what ends up happening in your environment, how you grew up, the fallen nature, it'll dictate to you. You will cause prejudice against you just through your thinking. You go in a store and some person of another color, maybe an employee, but they don't help you. Guess what's in your brain? See, they ain't messing with you because I'm black. <laughs> they may be lazy, never been trained, not even thinking about you. But because in your thinking, because as a person thinks, in their hearts, so are thee. So what I have to do is be able to override what I would normally think about and know the truth. The truth is, I came to the store. I would like some service. I go to this person. Hey, I don't know if you saw me, but I was here to get some items. And give them the benefit of the doubt. You'd be surprised how many people are wrong who think they're right. And just because you feel something don't mean it's true. How many of y'all be all this feeling stuff? I just don't feel like they like you. They may be dealing with stuff on their own, not even think about you. And you don't trump this thing up in your mind. I know my sister, she don't like me. She been talking about me. They may not be talking about you at all. But you don't put that stuff in your brain, put it in the universe. Now it's happening. And then you like, I can't believe they're talking about me. You said it. <laughs> you called it up. You drew the thing. Your sister wasn't thinking about you. But you had your thinking and that thing and the enemy will take a thought. You don't realize how the body, they understand the body now. Now, any thought that you have, if you don't bring it under captivity, it sends a picture of it throughout every aspect of your body. So you literally create your world. So, in structures, everybody say in structures. I want to start a movement of kingdom living, where you and I begin to act like we're in somebody's kingdom who has access to everything. Let me see if I can convince you. Jesus is your what? All right, y'all quiet on that one, man. Jesus is? Lord. Is he your Lord? Yes. All right, so let's see some things that he did. One time he needed a brand new car, which was been a donkey that had never been written, to take him in Jerusalem. All right? He tells his disciples, he gives them instructions. Sometimes you don't have your new car because you're not listening to instructions. Because he gives you instructions and he tells you, tells the disciples, go to town, you're going to see a donkey tied up that's never been written. I don't need you to figure this out. I don't need you to count your money. I don't need you to count my money. I just need you to do what I ask, ask you to do. Because you don't realize the Lord that you serve is sovereign over all, baby. 
And he told those disciples, he told them, oh, let me give you this one. Come on now. Did you know heaven is a manufacturing plant? Some of y'all don't know what a manufacturing plant does. It produces stuff. Do you know whatever God tells you, if it's not there, he will produce it? Amen. Did you know that? Literally. So he tells them, go to town. You're going to see a donkey tied up. Go get it, unloose it, and bring it. If somebody asks you what you're doing with my donkey, tell them the master has need of it. You know, if he told some of us that because of our thinking, we'd be like, no, that can't be God. That just don't make sense. And that's how you've been living your life now that you're born again. That's why you're not seeing senseless things happen in your life. Let me give you an example. He wants to give you financial resources so you can be a God to somebody. Meaning they don't think God real, but he will be real because you listened to him and did what he told you. We were in, I want to start a movement. Somebody say a movement. movement. Would you put up the video on how you start a movement? Can you put that up there? If you've learned a lot about leadership and making a movement, then let's watch a movement happen start to finish in under three minutes and dissect some lessons. First, of course, a leader needs the guts to stand alone and look ridiculous. But what he's doing is so simple, it's almost instructional. This is key. You must be easy to follow. Now here comes the first follower with a crucial role. He publicly shows everyone else how to follow. Notice how the leader embraces him as an equal. So it's not about the leader anymore, it's about them, plural. Notice how he's calling to his friends to join in. So he takes guts to be a first follower. You stand out and you brave ridicule yourself. Being a first follower is an underappreciated form of leadership. The first follower transforms a lone nut into a leader. If the leader is the flint, the first follower is the spark that really makes the fire. Now here's the second follower. This is a turning point. It's proof the first has done well. Now it's not a lone nut and it's not two nuts. Three is a crowd and a crowd is news. A movement must be public. Make sure outsiders see more than just the leader. Everyone needs to see the followers because new followers emulate followers, not the leader. Now here come two more people, then three more immediately. Now we've got momentum. This is the tipping point and now we have a movement. As more people jump in, it's no longer risky. If they were on the fence before, there's no reason not to join in now. They won't stand out, they won't be ridiculed, and they will be part of the in crowd if they hurry. And over the next minute you'll see the rest who prefer to stay part of the crowd, because eventually they'd be ridiculed for not joining. And ladies and gentlemen, that is how a movement is made. So let's recap what we've learned. If you are a version of the shirtless dancing guy, all alone, Remember the importance of nurturing your first few followers as equals, making everything clearly about the movement, not you. Be public, be easy to follow. But the biggest lesson here, did you catch it? Leadership is over glorified. Yes, it started with the shirtless guy and he'll get all the credit, but you saw what really happened. It was the first follower that transformed a lone nut into a leader. There's no movement without the first follower. See, we're told that we all need to be leaders, but that would be really ineffective. The best way to make a movement, if you really care, is to courageously follow and show others how to follow. When you find a lone nut doing something great, have the guts to be the first person to stand up and join in. See, somebody's going to follow. It's not about me. I have the opportunity to speak and preach, Pastor T and I and the entire team here, to tell people who you are, how powerful you are, that every one of us has God's spirit, and that you can experience these things in your life, and that you are extremely essential to God and his plan. So we were in Chicago, and while in Chicago... Pastor T and I were in Chicago last week. Then I had to go back the latter part of this week. I just got back yesterday. And there was a guy on the streets 
named Eric. And he got up, he had his keyboard, and I mean, he jamming. When Pastor T and I was there, I saw him. I said, man, that dude got it going on. I think I started dancing then a little bit, right? And then we went back. I saw him again. And so we went over. Would you guys put, put me up there? Oh, oh, oh. So going back to starting a movement, one of the reasons I do that is to train myself to do things I'm not comfortable doing. Many of you all are not experienced the best that God has for you because you stay in your comfort zone. I found out God's best for you is right outside your comfort zone. But most times you're not going, when he tells you to do something, you're just resisting it so much, you won't do it because somebody else is not doing it. I do things like that. It's not a sin. I do those things. I mean, what was a pastor doing those kind of things? Well, what does a pastor do? <laughs> yes. Yeah. That young man, Eric, I end up, that guy, I, I thought he was amazing. I sold in his life uh, like $25, something like that. Because you don't realize God will use us to be lights and encouragement to other people. Yes. And, and some of us, you, 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 you're still the same you were 10 years ago. Like you're the exact same person. You haven't grown at all. Sitting in church. Still the same comfortable seat you've been in. And hoping for something different. And the reason why some of us frustrated, if I have you stand up, you'd be surprised if y'all were honest, how many people are frustrated with life. You're frustrated with life because fr frustration is a good emotion that tells you the current direction you're going is not going to get you where you need to be. So God has a divine disruption of frustration in you, not to condemn you, not to ridicule you, but to get you to become dissatisfied with living way below how you're supposed to live. So if the Lord, if it put on my heart to dance, I'm going to dance. Yes. And I'm going to dance like nobody watching. Yes. And the, the interesting thing, I should have had at least two other dancers with me, but they were recording it. And if you're not careful, that's what you'll start doing. You'll start becoming a spectator at somebody else's game. And you are not created to do that. And that's why we end up worshiping people. Because we refuse to get out the stands, get off the TV, and go be on the field yourself. Are you going to be embarrassed sometime on the field? Absolutely, because so few are doing it. It was the lone nut that decided to follow the leader. It's not even about the leader. It's about somebody hearing and having some direction. And this is the year of ascent. I mean, you have the mind of Christ. You have the ability to think differently. But you have to be able to understand 
that he's speaking to you. And when he's speaking to you, you have to obey. Somebody say obey. Obey. So now let's now take this. The first point I want to make put up there, I want you to understand that the God that you serve is sovereign. Everybody say, the God I serve serve. is what? Come on, say that. Come on, the God I serve is what? What does that mean? Ultimate ruler, supreme ruler. Did I say supreme ruler? Do you know he can turn anybody's heart? So your problem not with people. Use your problem is with the Lord. Because the Lord divvies out his anointing through authority. By you doing what he tell you to do, you doing what he created you to do, then now everything in the earth is created to help you to do it. Not help you be somebody else. But once you decide to be passionate and be who you're supposed to be, then God will do it. He'll send the people to help you. You'll be surprised how many people will help you if you just get to doing what you're supposed to be doing. So in this first big point, God is what? Come on, God is what? That means he can do whatever he want to do when he want to do it. And he can do it for you. He's ultimate authority. He's supreme authority. That means if your kids are grown, he can help you. If you pray, he'll help your kids. God is what? That means supreme. He rules over all. He's the ultimate ruler. That's the first thing you need to know. Go to 2 Kings chapter 5, verse 1. There's a guy named Naaman. Naaman, just look at him as a commander of chief of a, a nation, the nation of Syria. His name is Naaman. Everybody say Naaman. Naaman. Even though we're talking about Naaman, I want you to look at yourself. Naaman is an ordinary person who's in a super ordinary position in the country of Assyria. Here we go. Now, Naaman, a captain of the host of the king of Syria, was a great man with his master. His master, that term master is talking about the king. He is the commander in chief. He runs the king's military. And he's called in his king the master. Naaman was a great man with his master and honorable. Somebody say honorable. Honorable. Because by him, the Lord had given deliverance or victory unto Syria. Now, here's one of the indications you'll find out. What would cause you to have favor with people, which is honorable? Now, name a captain of the host of the king of Syria, was a great man with the king, and he was honorable with the king. But what caused him to be that way? What caused the king to give this man honor? I will always ask you, open book test. Now, name a captain, the host of King of Syria was a great man with his master and honorable because, why was he honorable? Why was he considered a great man with the king? Because, read it, at, read the rest of it. No, read right there, because, read it after that. God is always going to tell you the reason for stuff so he can replicate it in your life. He's great with his king. He's honorable with his king because by him the Lord had given the Syrians victory in war. So this guy was being productive with his king. And because of that, the king was naturally honoring him. Could it be that people are naturally not honoring you because you're not bringing benefit to them? Are you a great person on the job? Or are they hoping to get rid of you? I know you got your Christian fish on your vehicle. I know you got your Bible on the table. I know you're praying, but you get to work late. You're talking about your employee, your fellow co-workers. You're talking about your boss don't like you. And a lot of times, I see people say things like they don't like me. When God may put you in a position where you cannot wiggle out changing. He may be trying to get something out of you, an attitude out of you. So you think the person don't like you. No, God has finally put you with a person who's not going to placate with you. Yeah. He's finally put you with a person that's going to get you to change and grow up. But you'll leave that job because you'll fabricate instructions. But the Lord must be moving me out that job. Because <laughs> I know you don't want me to be anywhere where somebody will not treat me with roses and kisses. <laughs> Christians are crazy. I'm serious. You should hear all the stuff. They go just quit a job because it got tough. You crazy. 
I'm telling you. Well, all, you, all you're doing is delaying. Some of you all got so close to the next level, and then you decide at this test, you know what? I ain't taking this. I'm going to just quit this one. And then you end up back here. I am prophetically being unctioned. There are some people, you've been saying to yourself, not to anybody else, you've been saying to yourself, I should be further than this. Yes. Anybody would indulge pastor to say, I'm talking to them? I know some of y'all are ashamed. You don't want anybody to know anything. The first way you can change something is by acknowledging it. Just because you don't talk about it and acknowledge it don't mean it's not there. So how many would say, I should be further alone in this? And he's going, thank you. He's going to work to help you, develop you through flawed human beings. I hear crazy stuff, crazy stuff Christians saying. Well, I know God don't want me in there. What? How do they refine gold? Fire. Fire. How? God told me he's going to raise up 100,000 gold believers out of our house. So if he's going to raise up gold, that means somebody's going to be going through fire. If Pastor T and I would tell you the fire we've been going through, y'all will quit. <laughs> it's just like working out. If I show y'all how I work out, some of y'all would quit and leave. Some of y'all would faint. Because I just learned the benefits of going through the fire. Because when you come out, when you come out, when you can come out, let patience have a perfect work that you may be thoroughly complete, lacking nothing. Don't you want to be in a lacking nothing state? I ain't lacking no peace. I'm not lacking joy. I'm not lacking uh, a paid off house, a paid off vehicle. I, I got great relationships. And all this come through development because he got to refine us because we came out the world. And the world always and always about false, false pretense. Pretend like you like people. And he's not going to let you get away with that. When you're a baby Christian, he'll let you get away with that. That's why you have so many Christians that never, ever get to where they're supposed to be. I'm talking about being saints because they, they won't humble themselves. And we're going to find this out through Naaman. You got to humble yourself when you're dealing with God. Don't come to God with all your, like you, all that in a bag of chips. Why? Hum humility. Humility. Now, Naaman is captain and host, so we see he's honorable because by him, Who? By him, come on, it's right up there. Stay with me. Because by him, the who? The Lord. Lord. Y'all see that? Do y'all know this man had no idea who the Lord was? Mm -hmm. The Bible is telling us it was the Lord through him, doing it through him. He didn't know that. God is talking to believers. Even though he's not in Israel, even though he's not a Hebrew, the Lord is using him to bring victory to Syria. But he didn't know it. He's telling us. And had given deliverance unto Syria. He was also a mighty man of valor, but he was a what? He was a what? Leprosy spiritually. The spiritual connection to leprosy is a sinner. Leprosy is something that you had to get out of society. The only reason why he was still able to be around the king is because his leprosy hasn't progressed yet. Eventually, leprosy is a skin disease. It's very contagious once it gets to a certain level. So he was able to not have to quit his job because he can hide uh, some of the things you can uh, indicate leprosy because he had armor on. So he was able to hide it. So he also was a mighty man and, and don't do you realize some of the people you and I people worship, celebrities and athletes and all these people they have millions of dollars big sold out arenas even though they are respected, people start crying when they see them. Do you know many of them are lepers too? And when you're a leper, Satan will uh, 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 do all kind of stuff to destroy you. Because just because people worship you, love your music, don't mean it gives you peace. 
That would explain Prince. That explain Michael. All the wealth they had. Michael just wanted a good night's sleep. Prince just wanted to be pain free. And that's what people who, all people worship him, even people in the church are worshiping these people. The humans were not created to be worshiped. Yes. They were not created to honor them, celebrate them, but worship, uh-uh. That's why God, is, he's sending and will send people of all different ranks here. And you and I cannot be fluttering because you see somebody on TV in here. They are in need of a Savior just like you. Amen. They're dealing with stuff just like you and need to be left alone when it comes down to, well, can I get a selfie? No. No. Because some days I'm not taking a picture with nobody. I do know when I go outside, I have to be prepared to greet people. But there are also times when, you know, with the family or people asking me for a picture, not today. It's not that time. Why? Because these people got to have a life and God got to have a place he can send them. But he has to have a congregation that's mature enough to leave them alone. Amen. To appreciate them, say, hey, praise God. Hey, good to know you and keep on going. Not where you got a bunch of false prophets in here and go prophesy to them so they can pull some money out of them. I've come across all of them. Yeah, yeah. I'm, this stuff, true story. This ain't nothing I heard. This stuff I've experienced. So, now name a captain of the host. So he was also a mighty man in valor, but he was a what? If he doesn't get cured, he dies. If he doesn't get cured, no man, no hospital can cure him. Now I want to show you something that's very important. Next verse, please. Let's roll with this. And the Syrians had gone out before companies. That means the Syrians military had gone out together in their pack and had brought away a captive out of the land of Israel. So the Syrians had conquered a part of Israel and took some people out and made them slaves. That's the word captive. For all of you all that are seated here right now with low self-esteem, not thinking that you are important and that God could use you mightily, even though people look like they don't appreciate you, even though it looks like you're not in positions of big means or you're not in position with a great title, I want to show you through a little maid, a slave girl, that God will use you if you are just allow him to work through you, even though other people may not see you as important. God does. This, he says, and they had brought away a captive out of the land of Israel, a little who? Maid. Everybody say a maid. maid. And she waited on Naaman's wife. I call her the maid in Syria. She's serving. She's a slave. She's been captive. She's not there because she want to be. She's there because Syria had captured some of the people in Israel, brought them to their country, and made them slaves. She's a maid for Naaman's wife. Naaman has a problem. He's a leper, but God loves Naaman. Naaman is on the Lord's mind more than other Israelites. We'll see in a second. And she said unto her mistress, I wish to God that my Lord Naaman or with the prophet that is in Samaria, for that prophet would cause him to be healed or recover from his leprosy. How many of y'all know, even though this is an insignificant position, she's a maid, and way too many of you all are overlooking people in your life because you don't think they're important. When you got a maid getting ready to tell this man where he can go get done that no human can do it. And if he's not paying attention, he's uppity up. And sometimes God tests you sometimes. Put you around people to see what you're going to do. The prophet Drake. <laughs> he's out of calendar. He has a song called Energy. You're wasting my energy. In other words, you're draining me of my energy. I don't prescribe all the lyrics and all the profanity. I'm able to hear wisdom no matter what I'm listening to. Amen. And most time I'll try to find clean versions of it. Because a lot of times these gifts, they're saying things in a perverted way, but there are principles in it. He said in his song, y'all draining me of my energy. He says, all these guys around me got high hopes 
about, it. no, here's, here's what he said. All of them got, you're draining me of my energy, meaning I notice all these guys around me talking about what they going to be. And then he says, but we going to see. A lot of people talking. God is an evidence maker. This is not about talking. I've had people say, he's not a pastor. I've had people come here, see all these people in the first and second service, people online, and then let somebody else tell them I'm not a pastor. They said I wasn't a cornerback. Now, y'all know why I'm telling y'all that? Way too many of you all are giving people authority to speak into your life who have no authority to do at all. And you've allowed this stuff to lay around in you where it's impacting you. You don't let somebody who themselves don't know why they're here give a comment to you as to who you are. You don't understand. Once I realized that God was a God of purpose, that I was created for a purpose, that if I just get to my purpose, even if you started your junior year in college, if you put in your heart to walk on a football team, it doesn't matter. Because you're not starting late, you're starting on time. See, you don't understand this sovereign God. If you would just listen to him, baby, he has so many things. I am so tired. I got a frustration spiritually for way too many, except in far too little. Mm -mm -mm. He sent you here to rock the boat. I'm going to rock the boat on you. Sometimes I'm going to push you. Other times I'm going to drag you. Because some of y'all done tapped out. This pandemic got you chilling. And you just, I just want to, I don't want much. You just want to get by. Those days are over. If I even see you doing it, I'm coming to get in your face. I used to hit people for a living. I hear some of y'all, in y'all old way of thinking, I hear ladies saying, there's no more good men. Devil is a liar. Devil is a liar. But if that's what you think, you're going to meet all the bad ones. You will bring the bad ones and keep the good ones away because you're thinking as a person thinks, so it be. So all these good men ready to come around you, God's sending them, but you said ain't no more good men. You sent it out your mouth. Not only did you think wrong, you spoke wrong. So you didn't believe something that's a lie. Well, there ain't no more good men, and all the good men were on their way. (laughs) And then the angels who were sending them heard you. Because the angels hearken to your words. So the angels were all, all these cool cats. Oh, man, this is, I got a great girl right here. We got a wonderful woman of God in the kingdom. Oh, I need y'all. The angels call them. And then now angels on the way. And then they hear, you talking to your girlfriend. Well, you know, ain't no more good man. Angels are like, all right, man, y'all just go on. <laughs> it's called whosoever will. I know I done prophetically answered somebody's questions right here. Because right now, right now, you just might as well just repent. Somebody stand up and just repent. Stand up and repent. To make the devil a liar, stand up and repent. Why nobody standing up? I know somebody here. Why y'all not standing? You're lying in church here. Who is bold enough to stand up and say, Pastor, show you right. And I know you're a man of God because you were talking to me. Who is standing up? Thank you. Hello, why are you sitting down? Stand up, stand up, stand up, stand up. Right. Now, nobody else get up. In the name of Jesus, I am declaring that the desires of your heart, that the desires of your heart, that God grant what you desire to you right now in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. not comfortable? Real quick, how did y'all feel when I asked y'all to stand up? What went through your mind? Don't do it. Don't do it. What went through your mind? <laughs> Say it again. Embarrassed. Embarrassed. What went through your mind? Because I saw you stand up and sit back down. <laughs> what went through your mind? Oh, I just thought I needed to be free. Thought you needed to be free, right? What? All you did was acting on instructions. Let me show you. Faith. 
Go to Hebrews 11.6 real quick. Hebrews 11.6. Let's all read this. Man, I've heard so much teaching on faith, and I love it. But man, we seem to miss it with this one. But without faith, it's impossible to please God. And I've asked you guys this question before, but I'm going to do it again for redundance. Repetition is the mother of learning. But without faith, it's impossible to please Him. Talking about God. Should put a big H on there. But without faith, it's impossible to please God. Everybody got that? Yes. Now, here's what is easy to do with the Scripture. Is insert in something in the Scripture that's not there. So here's the first question. You are highly intelligent people. I don't care what people have told you. I don't care what kind of grades you got in school. You have God's spirit in you. You're capable of doing anything, invent anything. You are able to start businesses. I'm talking to you. I sense to talk to you and tell you this. Because people label you. Your parents may not. Your parents may be going through things. They may have not known what was available. And they may have grown up in church. You don't realize your father created and owns everything. Everything. You think there's not an Elon Musk in here? You think there's not a Bill Gates in here? But you don't, you don't think like that. But you will going forward. But you will going forward because I'm going to preach it until you get it because I'm starting a movement. I'm starting a movement. But without faith, it's impossible to please him. Real quick, I'm going to have some dialogue with you. So, faith is what pleases God, right? I say it again. But without faith, it's impossible to please him. So, faith is what pleases God, right? Yes. Wrong. That's not what that says. Let's read that again. You all are highly intelligent. If you believe something is wrong, it's going to be hard for you to see it work in your life. He doesn't say there, faith pleases God. What does it say? Without it, it's what? To do what? Make this simple. That's why you want to pray for your pastor. Study, pastor. Study whoever's teaching up here. Study and put this meal together so you can bring wisdom and understanding to us so we can get this stuff in a simple place, put the cookies on a low shelf so we can learn it, understand it, and go live it in our lives. That's what I'm getting ready to do. What pleases God is the same thing that pleases parents. What pleases parents? It ain't deep. Without obeying him, without doing what he tells you that makes no sense, you'll never please him. You'll never obey him because he's going to give you instructions that may not make sense to you. And if you wait until it makes sense, you're going to fail every spiritual test. But if you'll just start practicing to do what he tells you, you will find out. He said, that's why he says, without faith is impossible. In other words, if I give you an instruction, if you don't just do it based because I told you, if you try to run it through your mind or anything else like that, you're not going to get the healing. We're going to see this through Naaman. If Naaman doesn't do it by faith, because it makes no sense. Somebody say no sense. No sense. We're in Lux restaurant in Chicago. Our team, the Grand Lux. We had our team, we were all at this conference last week. We were all at the restaurant. I, we go into the restaurant, I'm always attempting to listen and obey. Everybody say, listen and obey. Listen. Do what? Listen. listen and obey. Do what? Listen. listen and obey. Don't make this deep. God will train you with little stuff. He's not going to tell you as soon as you get saved, probably to go to China. He's going to start right where you are, start speaking to your neighbor. He'll start with small stuff. Why? He wants to train you because when you give your life to Christ, you're a baby Christian. So he wants to train you step by step. Put the tri- the what is it, uh, the wheels, the uh, training wheels. There we go. Some of y'all bump your head because you don't want training wheels on, right? He's not going to help hurt you. I was on an airplane today, uh, yesterday, and the first thing they said, our number one objective, American Airlines, 
is for your safety and that's your father's as well. So he's not going to tell you to go leap out and do something right away. He's going to train you little by little to listen to him. Everybody got that? So Naaman had to listen to this little young maid. Am I right? But without faith is impossible to please him, for he that comes to God must believe that he is. Everybody see that? Yeah. Must believe. In other words, you must believe that God. But guess who else believes God exists? The devil. So that's only the first part. Now I see a, con I see a uh, conjunction there. Y'all see it? What's the conjunction? Y'all remember conjunction, junctions? What's your function? Schoolhouse Rock 40 and over. Anytime you see that conjunction, every, anytime you see that hand, that means what's coming behind it is just as powerful as what's before it. So, if that's true, I must first believe that God exists. And, and this is what a lot of people don't believe. Like, in your heart of hearts, you really don't believe what I'm getting ready to read. But it's just as powerful as you believing that he's God. And that he is a what? Reward. Can't hear you. Reward. I can't hear you. Reward. Meaning... If I believe that he exists, if I live as, as, if, as, if, as if he exists, and believe just as powerfully, you're a rewarder. A lot of people don't believe, and by the way, take that word out, it's the Greek word, he pays wages. A lot of people don't believe God pay, will pay you far more than your job. Not only he exists, he is a rewarder of them that do what? Diligently seek him, that those that do their best to try to do what he tell them. We're in Grand Lux Restaurant where we like to go when we're in Chicago. We're there with the team. While at the team, it was like a, the Spirit of God put in my heart to go to the guest counter. And while everybody, we were all, everybody else was already seated, I kept getting a pull to go to the guest counter. I go to the guest counter, there was a lady talking to the manager. And it's a lady, and she has a bunch of young people in this restaurant with her. And these are young people, I don't know, probably from one of our underserved communities, young African-Americans. And they were all in this restaurant. And the lady who was talking to the manager said, I call y'all five times. Y'all told me if we come, you'll have a, a seat for us. And then the manager was saying, no, ma'am, you need to come here in person, put your name on the list, and then we'll tell you how long it takes. So she gets there, and it's going to take two hours. Now, while she's there, I sense the Spirit of God say, pay for the kids' food. Mm. All right? Everybody say, hear and obey. Instructions. Yeah. I'm talking about instructions, right? Now, some of us right now, if, if God would tell you that, like, you'd have rebuked the devil. You would say, that. <laughs> no, I know that ain't God, right? And all this, I'm only telling you this now because I'm some good guy. I've been trained in this. Y'all got it? Like, I've been doing this for years. Y'all got it? Yeah. So while she's doing this, that's what I'm hearing. I didn't say nothing. And I, but I also was impressed by how the lady was handling it and how she was talking to the manager. I said, cool. So I went back to sit down. But it was still on my heart. Still on my heart. So while at the table, I'm having a great time with our team, but I'm, I'm still got this in my heart. You know how you be talking to somebody and God talking to you? <laughs> that's still how it was, right? And so it's still on my heart. I said, cool. Finally, I saw the lady and I saw the kids. They were all sitting around, all sitting around. And so I saw the lady and I went up and I said, ma'am, I just want to tell you, I thought you managed that situation very well. And the lady told me, well, I'm glad you said that because I really, I, I had to walk away from it. And let somebody else talk to her, I was so upset. I said, cool, that was it. I said, well, whatever, uh, you did a great job. Now I want to sit back down. The Lord's still dealing with me. Some of you all be like, well, how God talk? I want to get this out of here. God speaks to you in your heart. Amen. He'll speak to you in your heart. Give me a proof text. When Moses turned 40 years old, not till he turned 40, did it enter in his heart to go visit his brothers in, in uh, Egypt. When it entered in his heart when he turned 40. So that means up to 1 to 39, never came in his heart. One time David was sitting around and everything was going well. The prophet Nathan told David, the king, do what all is in your heart. And David says, it's in my heart to build God a house. So I'm a, and then Nathan the prophet, after he heard David say that, he went home that night. God told him, go back, tell David, you're not to build the house. You're to gather the provisions and your son's going to gather. So what I learned from that is, do what's in your heart until God tells you differently. Too many of you all are wondering, oh, how God, will God talk? And then he'll use, he'll use a witness. 
Remember now, I don't need a bunch of witnesses as much because I've been doing this a while. But as he's training you in this, he may, he'll give you two or three witnesses. Everybody got it? So I talked to the lady. I said, good job. So I went and sat down having a good time. Then they, all of them were sitting down. Then the lady got up. She was, gonna, she was walking by where we were, and she's headed to talk to one of the children. While she walked by, I said, hey, how's everything going? Y'all sitting down eating? She said, yes. Yeah. She says, you won't believe this. <laughs> I said, what happened? She says, I called them five times. I said, yeah, I heard, I heard you tell them all that. And she said, I called them five times, told them my, my school, we're bringing a check. And now they're telling me they won't accept the check. She said, I'm so upset. So I learned, Anitra, I learned to be quick to obey. Because remember, God had already told me. So once I heard that, I said, all right. I said, all right, I know what I got to do. And she went on talking. I didn't say nothing to her. I called the manager. Because sometimes God will put you in a position to be an advocate for other people. And what, what is God trying to do? He wants to show off in you. That's yes. right. So somebody else will know God's real. That's right. Amen. That's right. We don't realize that. You don't realize some of the instruction he's giving you is for somebody else. And he's going to take care of you. He's going to bless you so much. You think you're losing something. I'm telling you, you're not losing nothing. Nothing you do. He says he went about doing good works. We're created for good works. Some of us frustrated because you're not doing good works. You're waiting on everything to come to you. And you don't realize how this thing is activated by your obedience. So I go to the manager. I said, I said, sir, I've been paying attention to this situation. You don't know who I am. I said, you've mishandled this situation. They told her to call corporate. And I said, you've hid behind corporate. I said, you're a manager of a major restaurant. You have eight-year-old young people here that will be disappointed when they hear how horrifically you manage the situation. I said, now here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to pay for this. I said, but I'm telling you, I will follow every channel I can to make sure you get better training. I said, I'm not insulting you. You got a little upset. He, I've been working a long time. I said, slow your roll. I said, I'm not insulting you. I said, at this level, here's why I said this, because I didn't say this part yet. I said to him, because this bill was almost $800. I said to him, the, the Spirit of God said, ask him if he can discount that. Because they weren't going, the people, the kids had already eaten. And they were going to either have to eat that check or take that check, or they were going to go free. <laughs> I said, Spirit of God, I said, ask him to do a discount. And I asked him, I said, you do a discount on this? He said, oh, I'll give you a dessert. <laughs> I said, now you're insulting me. <laughs> I said, sir, you don't know anything about me. I said, but I'm going, you've insulted me. He, I said, you don't understand in the position that these people has put, put you in. Your job is to find out how you can do the best you can to solve problems for customers. <laughs> And I said, you don't know anything about me, but I promise you, you will hear about this. He said, well, who you are? I said, it doesn't matter. It's about these young people that this lady, these teachers, about four female teachers, no male teachers around, how the disappointment that you placed in people because you wouldn't take a moment to be bigger than I can't do anything about it. I said, I don't want a dessert. I said, man, you've insulted me. I said, you keep your dessert. I said, make no mistake, you giving a discount or not, I'm paying for this. So I took care of it. Still, no big fan for it. This is not about me. I'm giving you an example of instructions. Everybody got this? Yes. And remember, before I knew all of this was going to happen, it was in my heart to pay for it. Y'all got it? God just confirmed it. If I didn't want to hear from God, I wouldn't ask her nothing. All right, praise the Lord. Everything going well? <laughs> God be with you and just be disobedient. You don't realize when God is stretching you, he's looking to lose something for you. 
give you proof text. Abraham was told to sacrifice his son. He had no idea that God thousands of years later was going to be able to sacrifice Jesus because of his willingness to want to sacrifice his son. Your current obedience is what's going to release your future blessings. I'm telling you, some of your stuff sitting on the shelf, some of your stuff, your new paid off car, paid off house, all that stuff you want is sitting laid up and the Holy Spirit is moving because he knows the whole system is set up off sowing and reaping. Genesis 8.22. There's no, reg no rigament. Nobody preached about this. Nobody said, you got to do all of this, this game stuff. That's not it. I'm teaching you the game. Pay attention to what the Holy Spirit says and just obey. Y'all yeah. got me? That's the game of this. Not to be manipulated by somebody, not somebody preaching so much, preaching so hard. You better pay the tie to God or whoop you behind. I'm going to teach you the gospel. I'm going to demonstrate it. You're going to see the evidence of it. And then you're going to see the principle. You're going to go do it yourself. The Lord show you what to do. You don't manipulate it. You can't make somebody get saved. You do what the Holy Spirit said and keep loving them and keep moving. Everybody got me? Go back to uh, Second Kings, and we out. We out, Second Kings. I think that's verse 3. We were, Second Kings, verse 3, and we out. Y'all ready for this? So, and she said unto her mistress, this is the maid. By the way, how many of y'all knew the maid is a gift? She was a gift for Naaman to be able to tell him where he can go get healing. And guess who you are a gift to? Somebody. So she was a gift. Would the Lord my... Would God, my Lord, were with the prophet that in Samaria, for he would recover him of his leprosy. Next verse. And one went in and told his Lord, saying, this is what the maid said, that if you just get in the land of Israel, there's a prophet. Put up the, the second slide. That lady was a what? That lady was a what? That lady was a what? A gift. She was a gift to him. A gift to get him to where he can get his healing done. And she didn't have a big title. She was just working and talking right where she was. Everybody got me? Go back to that scripture, please. And one went in and told his Lord, saying, Thus and thus the maid said, Now go to Israel. Next verse. And the king of Syria, because power got to talk to power. The king of Syria said, Go to go, and I'm going to send a letter to the king. The king of Israel said, I'm going to send a letter to the king. Because Naaman couldn't just go in Israel looking for the prophet. Otherwise, it would have started a war. And he departed and took with him 10 talents of silver, 6,000 pieces of gold, and 10 changes of raiment. Naaman understands when he's going to get a blessing, how to come with a blessing. Here's the letter. And he brought the letter to the king of Israel saying, now when this letter has come, behold, the king of Syria, the king of Israel is reading a letter from the king of Syria. He said, I'm sending Naaman, my servant to you, that you... Recover him of leprosy. Next verse is the king's response. It came to pass, the king of Israel read the letter and began to tear his clothes up and then said, am I God to kill and make a lie? The king is thinking he got to do it because he, he has a bad relationship with the prophet. When that news came, that king was supposed to call the prophet and tell the prophet about this problem. But because the king got a bad relationship with him, he's thinking he has to do it. Go to the next verse. I want to speed this up. And it was so when Elisha, the man of God, had heard that the king was all upset, Elisha called the king and said, man, why are you all upset? Send the man to me. Next verse. So Naaman came with his horses and with his chairs and stood at the door of the house of Elisha. What's happening here? This man, like a modern day celebrity, he got all these uh, chariots around him. He's coming with all his pageantry, all this extra stuff. He's coming to Elisha, the man of God. And Elisha sent a messenger that's cold-blooded. He didn't even go to him because God is no respect of person. He sent a messenger. I'm over you is what God is saying. I'm sending a messenger. Here's the message. Go and wash in the Jordan seven times and your flesh shall come again, and you shall be clean. What are the instructions? Oh. 
What are the instructions? Go back to the instructions, please. Next, that last verse, I think we changed. There it is. Without faith is impossible to please him. For anyone without faith is what? Impossible to please him. Go wash in the Jordan seven times. If you do, your flesh shall come again and you'll be clean. Jordan means humble yourself. It means lowering. John the Baptist baptized in what river, family? The Jordan River. Baptism is you and I humbling ourselves to follow God's instructions. The challenge with humanity and for all of us, we're grown people, but we're supposed to walk with God like kids and follow his instructions. He said, go and wash in the Jordan seven times and your flesh shall come to you again and you shall be clean. Next verse. But Naaman was angry and went away mad. And here we go. This is where some of us jump in. Behold, I thought. Who's talking? No, who's talking? Naaman. Who needs the healing? But he a big shot. So now he thinks he can do what God does. I thought, I thought the prophet surely come out to meet me. Don't he know who I am? <laughs> Pastor Aeneas put me in position of leadership here. Don't you know who I am? <laughs> mm -hmm. You got to go to the Jordan River. Humble yourself. He don't care who you are in this world. Amen, yeah. He doesn't care what your credentials are. Either you're going to do what he tell you, or you're going to be a leper. He will surely come out and stand and call on the name of his God and strike his hand over this place and recover the leper. This dude got his own remedy. <laughs> he thinking because he got power in Syria, he has power with God. Next verse. Now he's going to suggest what rivers are better than Jordan. Mm -hmm. What he's really saying, I ain't humbling myself. Let me go to the rivers of Abna and Farpar, rivers of Damascus. They better than all the waters in Israel. I should be able to wash in them and be clean. So he turned away mad. And the servants came near and spake unto him and said, My father, that's what they call Naaman, their leader, if the prophet had told you to do something great, would you have done it? That's why it's always good to have people around you that love you enough to check you even though you're in leadership. Because he's getting ready to die if he don't get cured of his leprosy. And his pride getting ready to cause him to die. And the prophet, if he had asked you to do some great thing, would you have done it? How much rather when he say unto you, wash and be clean. Next verse. Then he went down, dipped himself seven times in the Jordan, according to the saying of the man of God. And his flesh came again like unto the flesh of a who? Yeah. Isn't that interesting? The flesh of a who? Child. He had to become a little child to go dip in that Jordan River. So let's now take it to the New Testament. Put up there uh, Matthew chapter 18 verse 1. This to us now, the New Testament. And at the same time came the disciples unto Jesus saying, who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? This is the disciples arguing about who's going to be great. Next verse. And Jesus called what? <laughs> Can't hear you. I believe this is what's stopping us. We won't honor him and just listen. They were arguing over greatness. Jesus called, hey, hey, young man, come here. And a little child, he called the little child unto him and set the little child in front of the disciples. Object lesson. Next verse. And said, verily, verily, I say unto you. I say unto you. He's telling me prophetically right now in my ear, this is why some of us have been stuck. You refuse to do the 
the ridiculous stuff he's telling you to do. It don't make sense. He said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except you be converted and become as little children, you shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. All he's saying here, unless you humble yourself to follow my instructions like a child would, you're not going to experience all the power of my kingdom working in your life and in your churches. And if the power is now working in our lives and in our churches, the world not coming and Christians are going to start leaving. That's why I got to follow ridiculous instructions. I got to tell you stories. I got to show you stuff that I'd rather you not see. Like me dancing on the streets of Chicago. <laughs> verily, verily, I say unto you, except you be, become converted and become as a little child, you shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Who, as our clothes, have not submitted to the king? Look what he says. Seek first the king's instructions, Matthew 6, 33. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and everything these Gentiles chasing. They chasing clothes. They chasing money. By the way, the grand lux, when I paid that bill and went to that lady at the table, because we were getting ready to leave. I had already told the team, okay, we're getting ready to go because I didn't want any fanfare from this. I said, ma'am, the Lord told me to pay for this, and I gave her the receipt. And I got out of there. I was walking. Man, that lady run through there. <laughs> she started crying. I was already, I think, all, somewhere down the escalator. And that lady said, I don't know who he is to y'all. I don't even know what she said. Maybe it's somebody who's in here. Brandon, are you in here? Do you know what she said? I don't even know what she said. Somebody know what she said. But bottom line, the lady started crying. She couldn't believe it. So what did that allow me to do? To be an agent for the Lord. Well, I can do something tangibly because most people don't believe that God's real. Even people sitting in the church all the time. Oh, yeah, that's what he said. She, she didn't know how she was going to pay for this. But she didn't know that God had already put on somebody's heart to do it. Like I said, she didn't pay for that. She didn't ask for that. Same way with you. I'm telling you this stuff, this stuff true. Yeah. And if you will do what he tells you to do, everything you need and a more he has for you.